Well, let's take a walk through the GPS demo LabVIEW project. I have the Digilent PMOD GPS attached to connector A on my Rio. This is the MXP connector A. Take a quick look at the front panel. The NMEA sentences are the primary output of the GPS module. One of those sentences, I've extracted all the fields and displayed those fields over here. And then I've formatted latitude, longitude, and time. I'm going to run the demo now. And at this point, I'm going to connect power to the GPS module. This is what you would call a cold start. As you look at the sentences, the most recent output sentence appears at the bottom, and you can always scroll back to see the history. If you look at all of the information here, you'll notice that the status indicates invalid data. Now, some of these become active or valid before others. For example, time is now correct, and I can adjust the time zone to where I'm at in Eastern time. Now I see that the data is correct. However, the status is still indicating invalid data. Gonna keep watching this. And right now we see that the data becomes valid. The status changes. One pulse per second also becomes active as well. These formatted values are now correct and they are extracted from these two fields. Another field down here is the speed. At the moment I'm in a car going 55 miles per hour. I've now come to a stop and I'd like to point out that you can expect to see some residual speed indicated even when you are not moving. Well, let's take a look inside the block diagram. After setting up the UART, this area of the code reads individual NMEA sentences, extracts the data field, and then this case structure formats the data according to the specific NMEA sentence. Here I have a separate loop to monitor the one pulse per second signal and then display that on the onboard LED. And here's some cleanup code at the end. Now let's go back to configuring the UART. This is Visa Configure Serial Port. It's located under the Advanced I.O. subpalette of MyRio. We want the configure and then also be using Visa Read. MyRio has two UARTs available, either MXP connector A or B. You'll need 9600 baud, 8 data bits, and the termination character needs to be enabled. And I'm using the default of hex A, which is a line feed. Here at the beginning of the main loop is Visa Read, configured to read 100 characters. Now it will block until it reads either 100 characters or until the termination character is encountered. In this way, it can accommodate variable length NMEA strings. Each string is concatenated to form an array of strings. And these are displayed on the front panel here. This feedback node that is used to assemble the array of strings is located right here in the programming subpalette. Down here I'm using a property node to set the scroll position so that the most recent sentence always appears at the bottom of the display. And we do that by using the parameter value negative one. Property nodes are located right here. I'll show you how to access the scroll position. We need to manipulate a property of the NMEA sentences front panel indicator. Select link to and then pane and then find the front panel indicator. Then we need to select the property. Click on that, scroll down a little bit, find text, and then scroll position is located right here. You would then want to right click and choose change to right. You can find more details on the property that you have selected by choosing help, not just for the property note itself, but rather for scroll position. All right, in this area, we look at extracting the data fields from a single NMEA sentence. I'm using match pattern from the string palette. This is one string from the GPS module. I'm looking for either a comma or an asterisk as delimiter. Once that field is extracted, I'm using an auto index tunnel to assemble an array of fields. The remainder of this string is passed back and you keep cycling on this inside the while loop until you detect that there are no more 
fields remaining. You then break out of the loop at that point. Now this array of fields is ready for formatting. I begin by looking at the very first field, and this is with index array. First field is element number zero, and that's fed in as the selector for this case structure. The case structure is prepared to deal with the five types of sentences emitted by the GPS module. For example, sentence GPGGA has the GPS satellite fix information. Here's some of the other sentences. I don't have any code in there right now, but these are placeholders for later formatting. Here's GPRMC, Recommended Minimum Navigation Info. Inside this subdiagram, the index array picks out the individual fields of the sentence and then displays them on the front panel as strings. For example, the timecode field extracted from that sentence is displayed right here on the front panel. Let's look at the GPGGA sentence for some formatting examples. Here I'm using index array to pick out selected fields. I'm using scan from string. This is the one that's looking at the UTC time code. I need to pick out three decimal numbers, each of two characters in length. Once those are extracted as numerical values, you can do some math, in this case adjusting for time zone. These three values are fed into format into string, which uses this formatting string to display the time in a more convenient fashion, in this case as a 24-hour clock. By the way, I've already made these corrections in the code that you would be running, but would just like to point out a minor discrepancy here in the video. Now, that's the activities associated with the main loop. The main loop is being paced right here, 100 milliseconds per pass. I'm using a parallel loop to monitor the one pulse per second signal from the GPS module and display that on the onboard LED number three. This signal also appears on the front panel right here. This loop is being paced at 100 milliseconds as well. Now let's begin to wrap things up by looking at how to stop these parallel loops. I'm going to start with the air cluster that originated here, passes through the primary loop for reading the NMEA sentences. Look down here for the stopping criteria for the while loop. Either a button press on the front panel for the stop button will take care of that, or if we had an air condition on that air cluster, that's ORed together right here. Either one of those would break out of the loop and then we move on. First thing that happens is setting a local variable when either the button was pressed or we have an air condition. Now in the second loop, the one associated with monitoring the one pulse per second signal, either an air condition on the air cluster or a true value on this local variable will break out of the loop. Here's where you find the local variable pick the front panel control by name, and then choose change to read. That's how I got the version of this local variable that you see inside this smaller parallel loop. Now, when you press the stop button on the front panel, that immediately causes the local variable to indicate true. That condition then breaks us out of this secondary loop. Note that setting the local variable due to this air condition is exactly the same behavior as pushing the stop button on the front panel. In fact, you could actually see the stop button being pressed. So in this way, the secondary loop can cause the primary loop to terminate. Here I'm using merge errors to combine the two air clusters from the two parallel loops. Then this requires a little bit of explanation. Without this property node in place, when you stop the VI, the button would remain in the pressed down position, that is when the button is true. Here the property node then is manipulating the value of the stop button to false, and that gives the effect of releasing that stop button. I pass through simple air handler and then execute a my Rio reset. 